Hey guys, so I'm going to compare MTG Finance and this version of MTG Finance to something that I see every day, these online marketing gurus who are not what they seem to be. Now I'll just read you this line. Chillicott would soon remove Chapman from his Discord server and from his entire MTG Price Enterprise. Chapman says it's because Chillicott was threatened. Chillicott dismissed this and pointed to an incident from June of last year when Chapman collected more than $10,000 from people in his Discord, Chillicott's Discord, to acquire and distribute 96 boxes of special Japanese cards which were never acquired or distributed. Chapman says the store he was paying pocketed the money and didn't have the merchandise. Customers did not get their money back, although Chapman says he's been slowly refunding them out of pocket. That's basically a scam. So when you give money to someone, uh, even in elementary school and middle school, uh, my friends used to give me money if I went to the mall to buy them certain booster packs. And then, of course, I would have to give them the booster pack. This is not something that every elementary school, or every middle school child would know. And you might ask, why is my friends giving me money to buy booster packs? Because, you know, they can't ask their parents to buy them. And my parents are okay with Magic the Gathering. Surprisingly, I know. Therefore, I would collect money from all my friends. And then I would take a list of things that they want to buy. I would buy it for them when my parents took me to the Wizard of the Coast store, which is where I did most of the transactions. The Wizard of the Coast actually had a physical store next to JCPenney. And then after I returned, I would give them all the booster packs or the theme decks that they wanted to do, wanted to have. And then they would give me an extra card or extra pack as thank you, depending on how big the order. So they would get the cards, their parents wouldn't really know. And then, you know, everyone's happy. It's pretty astounding that like this basic principle that every elementary school child knows does not apply online. Now, when you, let's say when I'm in elementary or middle school, if I do not bring back those packs, if I take my friend's money and I keep the money and I don't bring back the packs to give said friend, well, I'm going to have to go to school with that friend for a long time, or at least the end of the school year. It would not be, the, re, the repercussion, right, would be very high for me, and I probably wouldn't do that. But if it's some online Australian who lives in Ireland who, you know, gives you inside information because he knows a Wizard of the Coast employee, I don't know why people gave him money. And supposedly, these are people who pay to be here in this uh, paywall, this uh, exclusive Discord channel. So they should be like financially, I mean, they're supposedly financially savvy, right? Now, maybe some of them want to learn about it, but this is definitely not the way to go to learn. When you buy a box of something from eBay, Amazon, Alpha Investments, Rudy, from anybody, a YouTuber, like you're expecting to get the box. You're paying for the box. What is this middleman? Like, why does this middleman exist? So when you think about it, why doesn't this store sell direct to the eventual customer? Why is there a middleman who is, you know, collecting the money and then giving the money to the store and then the store does not have the item? Like to have 10, what was it, 96 boxes of Japanese War of the Spark? That's a lot of boxes of Japanese cards if you're a local game store. Uh, wouldn't this be like a big company? So I don't know the details because I'm not in the paid Discord. But like, wouldn't this bigger company, I, I'm assuming it's not like an individual, right? I'm assuming it's a legit local game store. Wouldn't... For them to acquire 96 boxes of Japanese War of the Spark makes them a pr relatively big store. So there's no recourse. There's not PayPal. There's not eBay. Like, how was it required? I mean, did you just give the dude cash? So when the Black Lotus was scammed from the, and that's a seller, he reported to the police. He had documentations. He reported to the attorney general. 
he pale, uh, he basically did everything he could, and then he had a video of the evidence. Was that ever produced? Probably not. So I think it's pretty weird from you know the aspect like if I were to spend ten thousand dollars on a card, be it eBay, PayPal, online store, using my credit card, I could always do a chargeback, right? Why can he not do a chargeback? Like, did he literally just pay in cash? It does not make any sense. And the one thing that doesn't make any sense, like on top of all this, is, you know, you're paying to learn MTG Finance, apparently, and then you got scammed on the learning platform, right? The learning platform is uh, this Discord channel, no? That's what you're paying for it is the exclusive discord with inside information. So I think overall it is kind of funny. It reminds me of a lot of these uh, online marketing gurus who you pay them a bunch of money for them to teach you how to quote make money and give you, you know, lessons. And then what they really do is then they upsell you. So you're going to pay for a closer program, $2,000 and then closers and about black after you're done that training, supposed training, now there's a great opportunity for you to be a leader. You know, do you want to be a leader of Mark? But it's like, wait a second, you haven't made a single sale. What would give you the ability to, to lead the people <laughs> to make sales, right? It doesn't make any sense. In marketing, you see this all the time. It's like these people who are just, I don't know, they're not even, but they're very successful. And I'm sure that you've seen their advertisements before on YouTube. They're very, very successful, and it doesn't make any like lo logical sense. It's like if they could make all this money, and and here's the crazy part, right? So if you've been scammed of money, most of these people who are scammed, they feel too ashamed because in hindsight, yeah, they were being complete idiots, right? Like in hindsight, anyone could have seen the signs that this was, you know, red neon lights. Uh, green neon lights, scam, scam, scam. So they feel so ashamed that they don't talk about it. You know, they're too embarrassed and, you know, their their parents told them not to do it. Their significant other told them not to do it, but they did it anyway. So they've already invested money in it. And that's why... So I, I was talking to some uh, subscribers about on Facebook, on my real Facebook, about... Uh, you know, MTG Finance and do I, like I made some videos that were not very friendly to Rudy Alpha Investments, but um, I think I have to give him a lot more leeway because the way things used to be was some dude would start a Patreon, maybe name it Puka Trade, let's call it Puka Trade, and then they would scam everyone and then run away. And that's what MTG Finance was for a very long time. You know, when you talk about MTG Finance, I just think, oh, geez, what, what creative new marketing scam is uh, upon us now? So here, you know, you give some inside information, you leak some information, people trust you, you're building your brand on someone else's platform, for goodness sake. And then they're trusting you. And then you ask them for money they give you money. Does that sound like someone that we know? Uh, a cheeseburger of some type, a Wendy's a Junior cheeseburger. You you know you do good for the community. You raise, you do some charity auctions, and then you raise even more money the next time for quote charity, a charity that never happens. Right? Isn't that a scam? So here it's very similar to hey, I'm going to leak inside information, and when that inside information makes you like a few dollars if any money, you can trust me. And then once you trust me, I'm gonna ask you for $10,000 so you can uh, give me your $10,000. $10,000 <laughs> is a lot of money. I mean, even $110 a box, 96 boxes, you have to understand that's not a great price, $110 per box of Japanese War to Spark. Uh, I think it wasn't, was it Ami Ami or was it, um, it's one of the Japanese vendors that I used to order for my Anime Plus, not my Anime Plus, my Shibuya Union Plus for my company, my real company. Uh, they had those boxes for like a, a 
once you equivalent, once you translate it into uh, US dollars for about $100. So it wasn't even like a great deal. I don't really know what time, like last June, maybe it was a better deal then. But yeah, I mean, and they're a huge store. They don't have 96 boxes, right, in stock. I think they had like 12 or something. Because I was going to add it to my order. I almost did, but my order was already like to... Um, so like EMS, like I didn't want to put in two boxes and then I want to be EMS, so I had to all fit it in one box. So my conclusion is very interesting, is like you build up the trust so you can run one giant scam. Same with Pico Trade, right? The same with Monthly Magic Box. The same with you send a bunch of boxes for free early to Tolarian Community College. He promotes the box. Now you got a bunch, you got a hundred more people interested in paying you in advance for the box, six months in advance even, and putting their credit card down, and now you just run your scam from jail, which is what the monthly magic box was being run from, jail. I've seen a picture of the dude, and the dude, is, he, uh, he looks like he's a felon, so like if you could like describe a felon on TV, it would be this dude. <laughs> anyway, bye guys.